Even though diesel power was becoming more widely accepted, Cummins had yet to become a primary choice in the heavy-duty trucking industry. Again, Erwin Miller asked questions in order to find a solution. And start getting a, a, uh, a business with commercial sales was hard because no manufacturer wanted to put a diesel engine in. They all made their own engines and they had an engine plant. So the only way we were able to break in was to go to the leading trucking companies of the nation. Start off with offer to put an engine in free. And uh, their purchasing power turned out to be so good that then finally working backwards, uh, they were able to persuade the uh, manufacturers to install it originally. The strategy proved successful, and soon other manufacturers followed suit, bringing out competitive engines. Yet rather than feeling apprehension, Erwin Miller welcomed the competition because he saw an opportunity for Cummins to truly differentiate itself in the eyes of the customer through both distribution and service. As often happens, when you're the only player in a business, business is not very good. Uh, the market for diesel engines exploded when we began to get competition. Uh, we had, uh, we concentrated on building an excellent service organization all over the country and felt that, uh, that serving the customer in the way he wanted to be served uh, was uh, a key, it still is. And we worked very hard to correct uh, flaws and push the technology. Erwin Miller's view of competition was typical of the unique vision he inevitably brought to any situation. This was certainly true in 1936, when the Congress of Industrial Organizations, the CIO, came to Columbus to organize workers. It was a time of extreme tension, and while other Indiana industrialists suggested armed vigilantes as a method of keeping union organizers at bay, Erwin Miller replied that at Cummins, we don't feel right about fighting our own people. CIO uh, made us its first target, the automotive industry, which meant Indiana. And uh, um, they came to Columbus and the, the local industries thought that you had to fight them in traditional manners, which is create a lot of deputy, buy some tear gas and rifles, keep them out of town. And he had a meeting and Mr. Mack and I went and uh, it was kind of un uncomfortable because they were all our friends. And we said, well, count us out. We're not going to, uh, uh, we're not going to participate. Um, and as far as uh, our people are concerned, it's up to them to decide. Erwin Miller let Cummins workers know that he was entirely willing to work with the union of their choice. And in 1936, Cummins employees formed their own union local, the Diesel Workers Union. Erwin Miller's view of unions, though quite unique within the business world of the day, was really just a small part of the overall philosophy he brought to business, a far-reaching view that focused upon the worth of the human spirit. And the cornerstone of his approach was to recognize the inherent worth of all the people within the company. We have uh, discovered you cannot force a, any of us to do his best. You can't order a guy to do his best work. If a, a man or woman is to do his or her best, it has to be in a climate where, where, where you want to do it. After you're in business for a while, you discover there's something you might call the wisdom of the workplace. There is a lot of knowledge right there on the shop floor or in the office. And if you don't tap it and use it, you are not going to be very productive. So one of the jobs of management is to employ, is to elicit and employ the actual wisdom and knowledge that is around there by making the jobs meaningful. 